a lot of craze here that was, what is it, fastest, 12 sensors, facial recognition, but there was a bit of a, an embarrassment on stage when it comes to self-parking. It doesn't uh, uh, self-park as, as you might expect even a cheap Ford to do it these days. Um, I, it's interesting to see uh, how many companies are able to work in this, tech, this kind of technologies. Uh, it is not Tesla's game alone. We tend to focus on Tesla, I think, in Silicon Valley so much because it's a Silicon Valley company. But in fact, the, the automakers from as, as, uh, startups like this or, or companies like Ford and, 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 and many others, Audi, uh, BMW, all working on a lot of these uh, ideas. Porsche, interestingly, a lot of interesting work around electric cars. So uh, this is a, Tesla might have pointed the way, but a lot of companies are coming very fast into this space. Selena, the Chinese billionaire was there at the event. In fact, it was him where it was the slightly embarrassment made that the car didn't quite park. I think he called it a bit lazy that day. But tell us a little bit more about the billionaire behind this company. So the billionaire behind it, Zhao Yuqin, he goes by YT. He's very well known in China. He's known, known for being very brash, very ambitious, sometimes too ambitious. Uh, he actually started out as the local IT guy at his tax bureau, and he's really made his fortunes in the publicly traded company Le Si, which is basically kind of like the Netflix of China. It's been growing very fast. But from there, he's quickly expanded into a slew of other businesses, ranging from smartphones, VR headsets, TVs, movies, smart bikes you name it and he's expanded into it um, but recently we're seeing that he may have expanded a bit too aggressively he wrote in an internal memo to employees recently that they're moving too fast and they're having trouble raising cash uh, but again he's a very brash well-known person in China he said things like Apple is a very slow innovator and we can outbeat uh, Elon Musk and Tesla <laughs> outbeat another rather ambitious man who sets high targets, well, which is you know, Elon Musk. You pointed out the, the self-parking problem. When the, when the Tesla Model X was first unveiled down in Los Angeles, Elon Musk couldn't get the trunk to open. And when they got the, another model where he's showing it off, he got out of the car and smacked his head uh, when he was trying to show off how well, the headroom of the car had. It didn't it show how little it has. Now, he's a very tall guy. But nonetheless, uh, these, these sort of live, job, uh, live demos a la Steve Jobs hard to pull off and it's interesting you see every CEO of every kind of industry now think they've got to go on the stage quite often in blue jeans and a black turtleneck and introduce their products uh, as opposed to the ways that cars and other devices used to be released. One thing I tend to find at tech conferences is the technology doesn't work and certainly neither does the Wi-Fi but Selena talk to us about the money that is being put into this particular element Faraday mm -hmm. when it comes to the billionaire how much money is he winning is he losing when do these things start to mm -hmm. sell? So, I mean, he put in $300 million of his own money into this. He has a very kind of unique way of financing his ventures. He basically pledges his shares in his publicly traded company and plows it into all of his ventures. Uh, we learned at CES that you can reserve this car for $5,000. It's unclear how much this is going to uh, retail for when it comes out, apparently, in 2018. I think that after last year's CES, there was a lot of skepticism around Faraday Future since they didn't release any functioning car. It was merely a concept car and this year we got an actual functioning car but we still have a lot of questions hanging in the air uh, lots of skepticism around how are they going to make money this is incredibly expensive to produce it's unclear what the business plan is going to look like five thousand to order it was only one thousand when it came to a tesla talk to us a little bit more today, Corey, about what's going on with Tesla, because it's not all about right. cars. We forget that it does have a gigafactory, and that's uh, that's running, and they've hit their deadline. Well, they, uh, we'll see what the, we'll see what the actual production is out of that. Tesla has a, a history of not hitting its deadlines and missing its own estimates, um, as we've discussed. You know, uh, I, I th it's also interesting this production issue, right, which is going to happen to all these car makers. Um, production is hard. Tesla this quarter said that they had production problems; they couldn't get as many cars out as they want. They said that they had the same excuse for missing numbers in the first quarter. So uh, these recurring problems about being able to produce as much as they thought they were and doing it successfully is really hard with this business that is the Model X and the Model S. Now when they want to get to a much larger level of, uh, they would have to more than double production this year and the next year, which they've been un unable to do, in order to get the levels of Model 3 that they want to produce. But the Gigafactory, today that's the news coming from Tesla, and the shares are popping, they're up more than 4%, even though we saw them fall after hours yesterday on the yep. concerns of the car part of the business. Gigafactory up running, they've hit their deadline. Uh, the, the factory is running. How much they're producing, though, is a yeah. question mark. And we'll see, see what, what they actually produce over time and if there's any value there. And if there's demand for this product, right, where there are uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of competitors who can, who can hang a battery in your garage see. for an questionable use. Selena, what do you think about some of the debate that's going on when it comes to CES 
of course, of who wins, whether it's indeed the tech companies or it's the auto companies. But Faraday wants to own the data. I mean, what is the value in selling these cars? Is it all from what they make in terms of profitability on, on the actual car itself? Or where does this billionaire's vision go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to talk about this in the context of Lakeo because they have a kind of a very unique vision. I had a chance to sit down with YT at their headquarters a few months ago, and he laid out this very broad vision of what he wants a consumer to experience. So imagine this. You have your Leiko cell phone, you start watching a Leiko movie on it. Then you may hail an autonomous Leiko electric vehicle where you continue to watch that movie in the car. And then you exit the car, you finish where you left off, you watch it on a Leiko, a VR headset, and then continue on a Leiko smart TV. So as you can tell from this scenario, cars are a really integral part of this vision because YT sees a future of electric vehicles of autonomous cars in. That car, that vehicle, is another yeah. place to watch content. And let's remember that this company actually started as a software content maker, and all of these devices and hardware, cars, smartphones, you name it, is all just shells to hold all of their software. So in the context of YT, it's a very, very broad vision he has.